for fun tonight, we're making this program a cooperative one, sharing it with our television audience. Everyone says I'm 13 years old. It comes from uh, Edgemere, 91, New York. It says I'm 13 years old, and I've watched your program, The World We Want, since its beginning. Here are my questions. Is your idea of this country any different now than before you had come here? Who wants to take that? Minji. Minji from Nigeria. Well, my idea of this country is very much different from the idea I had before I came. You know, I was rather surprised to see that there weren't any gunned cowboys in the streets of New York and that the people here didn't walk on their heads and walk quite normally. <laughs> Everybody else and didn't use half as much slang as I thought they would. <laughs> but Minji, what's it going to be like when you get back to Nigeria? Well, when I tell people all these things, they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> What's the main thing you're going to tell about America, do you think, when well, you go I, back? About the people, generally, because although I was told before I came that they were nice people, you weren't done as much justice because I've met with friendliness everywhere I've been so far. Well, we're glad we'll have a good friend <laughs> in you in Nigeria. Anybody else want to take that question? Yes, Usha, well, from uh, India. The, I think the <laughs> biggest misconception that I had about America was that I thought that the Americans had absolutely no problems uh, I know that may sound strange to you, but that's the way most people in India look upon it. And especially in the case of money matters, people in India usually think that the Americans have no problems whatsoever. Whereas where I've been here, I have found that money does mean a lot, even to Americans. And they work hard to earn it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else got an answer for that one? Yes, this is Nasreen from Pakistan. Well, I want to say something about schools. Uh, before I came here, I was told that the schools here, the standard of education was very low. And I've been to six schools and I found that the standard is pretty high and it's, I think, just about right for the people here. And it's... Uh, <laughs> 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 Did I say something wrong? <laughs> well, I think it's all right for them. They know just as much as we do. But uh, they, I think uh, the academic subject should be stressed a bit more. Uh, we have some more questions from our 13-year-old. He says, uh, what's the most fun you've had since you've been in America? This, wait a minute, this is Fifi from the Gold Coast. I think I'll start off by saying this. Uh, I know most of you would believe me, but uh, believe me, the first time I saw a live elephant, and a live tiger, and a live uh, zebra was in the uh, Central Park Zoo. <laughs> and I think it's been the uh, greatest fun I've had since I've, I've been here. We never see those things in Africa. And I enjoyed seeing them very much because I felt very much at home in the zoo. <laughs> anybody, else had a, a, anybody else had any fun here? Really? Well, for myself, it's always very difficult to answer, but I think here in America, the most fun was certainly meeting a lot of people, very different, certainly. <laughs> certainly very different, but it was certainly you want a to lot say, of fun. Uh, do you want to identify the people, Willie? Well, I don't like too much, because... <laughs> yes, it wasn't generally. the girls, was it? Yes. <laughs> Anybody else had any fun? Yes, Akram. This is Akram Barakat from Jordan. I think uh, I had mo uh, the, the most... Uh, <laughs> I can say it was the, the most funny thing was the drive-in movie. The drive-in <laughs> movie? Anybody else had fun? Yes. Well. This is Majid Taranian from Iran. I was prepared to dislike New York and uh, skyscrapers, and I had heard that uh, New York is the, mo the dirtiest city in the world. But, uh, well, I should say that uh, I enjoy a lot walking in the streets and looking at the skyscrapers and find myself so little. Uh, in comparison with them. Anybody else? Yes, uh, this is uh, Lila Marais from Brazil, well, who plays a most... mean guitar. <laughs> I think the most fun I had was when I saw first snow in all my life. I didn't see that before. Oh, yeah. We don't have snow in Brazil, so I had to taste it, I had to step on it, I had to make <laughs> snowballs, lots of things with snow. Uh, yes, the most fun is Sabine Speck from West, Ger from West Berlin. For me was to live in a studio where a ghost was supposed to go around. The first day when I was there, I had to go in the cellar and to, uh, to fetch coal and wood. But after hearing of the ghost, I wouldn't do it anymore. <laughs> yes, Tari Larasati from Indonesia. 
For me, I like to go on shopping here in America. <laughs> because in Indonesia, we can't buy ready dresses, so the girls have to buy the materials and to make their clothes by their own self. But here, I can buy ready dresses as, as many as I like. <laughs> How about you, Sunil Lababidi from the Lebanon? Personally, I like very much somebody to get lost in New York. For instance, today when we were coming here, <laughs> we got lost and we couldn't find the way. And we had more than uh, four or five times we had been in Texas subway <laughs> and so on. <laughs> I never forget that day and never. When you got lost in the subway? Yes, everywhere. Uh, in the subways, on buses. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I must say, I've never been more surprised than when all of you showed up tonight when you didn't have any kind host student to bring you here. <laughs> Simply delighted that you got here. Let's go on to another question, still from our 13-year-old called Edward Wendell. Uh, what's the most beautiful thing you've seen in the United States? Uh, Eva from Finland. I would say that uh, something which we can't find in Finland, which is beautiful here, is the skyline of New York at night when all the lights are on, on United Nations, on Empire State Building, and so on. Uh, yeah, this may, oh, did someone else? Yeah, no, you've had a turn, Willie. George from Yugoslavia. I think that the most beautiful thing I have seen over here is American people. I'm so, so surprised with their uh, friendly hospitality, and uh, I'm so impressed by them. And that's the most beautiful thing I have seen over here. I wonder why this surprised you. Were others of you surprised by it? Yes. 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 Well, why should you have been surprised? Doesn't everybody know this? No. <laughs> there, from Norway. Well, I guess uh, many of us deep in our hearts had a kind of feeling that Americans, uh, in a way, are tough. That's maybe through, through uh, movies and, and books about the United States that we got the impression that the Americans are risky drinkers or <laughs> or cowboys or gangsters and I think it surprised us that we could find as well hospitality and friendliness and also uh, a deep religious feelings among the people that is something that uh, contradicts with the preconceived impressions I think most of us have got about the United States and her people uh, Laxman from Salon I'd, I'd like to add to what uh, Fair said uh, I I think, uh, in my opinion, we, uh, before we came here, we didn't think of the American people as such. And that's wha what uh, surprised us. We thought of Americans only in terms of uh, their statesmen and what we read in the newspapers, but we didn't think of them as people, as people like us. And I believe that that was the reason why it surprised us. Uh, Sabine from France. We judge the American people by what we see in our countries, which are, and the people we see are usually tourists with much money, and uh, they're not always the nicest people, so we judge them in their own way, and here we find what they really are and how really wonderful they are. I wonder, do you think Americans, uh, I mean, do you think people from other countries have to come here to find out what Americans are like? Yes, yes. yes. I think so. Well, that's going to make it difficult, yes, Sania? <laughs> Really, I, I was very much impressed uh, before I came. Well, I, I knew many people who came here before. Uh, but uh, personally, I was very much impressed, uh, for instance, by the movies, by the uh, papers, by the plays which we, uh, we read. It gave us an entirely different idea about America. But honestly, when I'm going back home, I have many, many things to tell about America and the real social life and everything, which we didn't have before. <laughs> we didn't think, I mean, the idea which we had before is absolutely different. We're looking forward to coming to Beirut so you can show us the <laughs> social life of Beirut, too. Oh, well, uh, Tuan, this one's for you. Uh, or did you want to answer the previous question? Well, I'll, I'll Would you stand up? Something because this is Tuang from Thailand. B before I came here, I thought Americans were friendly for a, a short while, and they'll they'll forget us. But no, I was wrong because every host family wrote to me, and uh, they are still friendly as they are. Uh, the, now this question to you, Tuang: uh, Are there any American customs that you would like to see added to your cultural <laughs> treasury in Thailand? <laughs> well, uh, I think about the social life a little bit and then about the you know the cost costumes just like white bucks and uh... <laughs> Tuan have you got your white bucks on now oh no because I'll have to clean it before I go <laughs> and the other thing 
this kind of tie. We don't, we use it too, but only for the Siamese cats. <laughs> I want to explain that the whole group has been trying very hard to get Twang's newly acquired white bucks dirty before he gets them back to Bangkok. I'm sure he didn't wear them tonight for that reason with 34 pairs of feet to step on them. Um, do you have, have any of you had any frictions with American teenagers? No. Any friction? Yes? Sabine from France? I had a few friction into, um, with the American teenagers. I had a lot of difficulties making them understand that in France we're not drunk and always going to <laughs> nightclubs and things like that. <laughs> Any other problems? Minji, Nigeria? I, I had some difficulty in letting them realize that um, other places in the world um, are home to, to people. Well, a girl was very upset when I told her that I would be glad to be back home. And I had to explain to her very carefully that I was going back to my home. <laughs> and, I, and, she, and I had to explain to her it wasn't because the Americans have been unkind to me or it wasn't because I didn't have a good time here. Here's another question right on that same line. It comes from Mrs. Lynn Schilke of Westbury, New York. She says, uh, if you had the opportunity to remain in America and become a citizen of the United States, would you do so? No. 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 <laughs> All right, let's get some reasons. Why not? Uh, Eric from Denmark. I think I, I ought to say the same thing as Minji just mentioned, that uh, I'm not uh, giving this answer no, that I would not want to stay in the United States because I don't like the Americans. It's for purely emotional reasons. It's simply because Denmark is my country and America is your country. And you love America and I love Denmark. Yes. Yes. How about you, uh, Rifat from Egypt? Oh, I say yes. <laughs> For one reason, because uh, if we consider that uh, that's uh, another nation and my nation is quite different from this and I only have to work for one nation, we will never progress. So I think that we, what we have to do is to make our words one word and I don't mind to stay in this country to work and to pro produce as the other country if the, uh, the goal is one, which is the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rifa. Yes, uh, Akra? I think that uh, I will not stay here if I had the opportunity to, because Rifa said that he, uh, he wants to serve the world, but you didn't serve your country yet, so we better go and serve our countries first. And then I think that the United States is more developed than our countries, so we go first, uh, we go home and try to develop our countries to bring them to the level of the United States. And then, <laughs> if, if we had the choice, then we will come to the United States. But uh, something else, uh, our countries are our countries. As Eric so yeah, well put it. How about you, Willie, from Belgium? Well, for myself, it's quite different because I want to become a physician and uh, it would be a lot more interesting for me to work in America. I would have more opportunities to develop uh, new techniques in uh, medicine than in Belgium. We have more, uh, you, you are having more labs and more uh, ability than we have. And that's the reason why I plan to come back here. Well, we got two candidates out of 34. Sai, you haven't said a word. Sai Sang Tum from Burma. If you had a chance to be an American citizen, would you want to? Well, uh, uh, half and half, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to work that? No. Uh, well, uh, I myself, like Willie, want to be a doctor. And so, uh, just like him, we, uh, in our country, we don't have, uh, well, advanced laboratories or anything like that. So I would like to come here and, uh, well, maybe spend a few, well, uh, well, take out about 10 years out of my life and uh, spend it here and then go back and try to develop my own country. Well, that uh, I think is what I m said, half and half. Uh, how about, since we're in the medical uh, profession, how about you, Daniel, from well, Uruguay? I'm going to study medicine also, but uh, and they think that here there are many opportunities for specialization, so maybe I would like to come here for a year or two to specialize. But I sincerely think that I would like to live in my country uh, because or I would like even uh, to go to Israel as, as a Zionist but, uh, because that's, as Eric said, for emotional reasons. And besides, as a student, I can say that the feelings are in Uruguay even when they are alike as a whole as the feeling of the United States because both countries are democracies. I find here that there is uh, too much emphasis on the anti-communist feeling 
I think that as Democrats, we must be against all totalitarianism, not only communism, but also all the other totalitarianism you find in the whole world. Because if we want a democratic world, the only way to find it is by facing all kinds of totalitarianism and not only communism. Uh, Nasreen from Pakistan had an answer to the question whether she'd like to uh, stay in America and be a citizen or not. Well, I'm speaking for the, I think, of the woman of my country, and I would say no, because uh, the women in my country are coming out recently in the last eight years, and we're helping to build up our country, and that's why I want to be one of those to help to develop my country. Uh, people sometimes tell us that being young in India or Pakistan today is a little what it was like to be young in America in 1776. Is there some of that feeling? Yes, Mr. Waller, you see things growing up and developing in front of you, and it's a very nice feeling. Is that true in other places, too? I'm sure it is, yes? Explain for us the first uh, situation in 17... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our history books. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken that for granted. Uh, Jack from Sweden, here's a question for you. Stand up so we can find you, will you? Uh, we, know, we know you're a science fiction enthusiast, but if you could in some way pull yourself back in time and space to just 10 years away, uh, one of our audience has asked, what do you think the world is going to look like 10 years from now in 1965? Well... <laughs> uh, obviously, the first rocket to go into an orbit around the Earth, that is, the space station, will be launched at that time. <laughs> Naturally, however, uh, there will be someone there already that is, a saucer crew already circling the Earth, obs making observations. <laughs> uh, Would you explain the word, please? Which word? I used saucer crew, about 20. did you say? Saucer crew. A I saucer crew, I'm sorry. Uh, if you ever possibly heard about flying saucers... Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> Obviously, there will be some kind of conflict. However, there will be no armed conflict since the saucer crews have been making observations for so long. Uh, they will be able to make threats if they want to and to quench opposition without bloodshed. After this, the Earth will be a happy colony of the saucer crews. <laughs> Nobody can improve on that. Let's go on to another one. Um, do you prefer American clothes to the kind of clothes you wear in your country? If you wanted to, if you could, would you dress always as the Americans do? No. no. Toddy? Yes, but not the Bermuda shorts. <laughs> <laughs> if you wear shorts and it's real shorts, I think that Bermuda is not short and not long. Perhaps we should ask Marlene from South Africa <laughs> what... <laughs> Well, I can only say that I like Bermuda shorts very, very much, and they might not look very pretty, but I think they are the most comfortable things I've ever worn. Are you going to take them back to Johannesburg, Marlene? Yes, but I'm afraid I'll have to put them in my scrapbook. <laughs> because my father, unfortunately, thinks they're horrible. Uh, Usha from India? Uh, uh, I don't think I'd like to wear the Western dress, not because of anything I have against it, but as Guy said the other night, that we who wear the saris are at an advantage because our figures don't show so much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it hides deficiencies of figure. <laughs> uh, I know we can't tell it with that sari that you and Nasreen are wearing, but uh, some of the girls have gained quite a bit of weight here. Would you oh, like to admit whether you have or not? <laughs> I, I should like to know how the American woman would wear three and four inches of the sand in my country. Three yeah. and four inch in heels, you mean? Inch heels, yes. They probably get blisters and sore feet and red feet from that. In other words, our shoes wouldn't be very practical oh, no. where it's we 110 to... to how, how hot does it get in Karachi, Nasreen? 125 in summer. Thank well, you. Uh, we're going to be there in April. What it, will well, it be like? Well, the temperature now, my mother wrote, is 97. Oh. So, <laughs> it won't be too bad, at least. Uh, this is a question for the girls. Uh, will you keep on wearing makeup when you get home? Those yeah, of you who start... Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't start here. We started before we came. We, we started before we came. Not so. Minji. No, but we started and then we Stand up. We can't see you, Minji. <laughs> you, what did you say? 
Well, I never started and I won't start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Sabine from Germany. I'd like to keep on that we are not supposed to wear it in school and therefore oh, I can't yes, do it. Yes. Uh, May I answer school? that question? <laughs> <laughs> Did you understand the question, no, Margie? I'm not I... supposed to, but uh, frankly, I don't like the make of the girl. Oh, Seems uh, well, tell illig us what? Oh, well, I was uh, quite enchanted once uh, getting on a bus and uh, a number of, a bunch of girls <laughs> riding the bus and uh, they were, they had no makeup and I found uh, something unusual in them and mm -hmm. I, I was so enchanted by them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a question uh, from Oh, I was sorry, had you finished? Yes, I did. Ah, we have your meeting. Uh, Minja, here's a question to you. Um, what reason will you give your parents when you return? If you talk out of turn, as you said once on television, you might. Oh, well, I, I'll tell them. I got it from the American kids because they talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the rest of you going to have a problem in your behavior toward adults when you get home as a result of your three months here? Yes, yes. 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 Well, wait, now, one at a time. What'd you say, Nasreen? Well, it takes some time to adapt ourselves to the old customs again. And because I'll always be comparing the differences, I tell my father, well, if the Americans can do it, why can't we do it? And do you think that will be an adequate uh, explanation, Ewan? I'm afraid not. He'll just say a big <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, here's another question. What are you taking back home with you? What things are you taking back home from America? Oh, Wait a minute. Goodness. George back there has got a great big smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, in USA, we have ice cream only during the season, summer season. So uh, I got ice cream freezer. <laughs> An ice cream freezer. What else are some of you taking home? Uh, yes, Daniel? Well, I, got, I took a rubber boat and... Uh, a rubber boat? <laughs> what for? Uh, for taking it to the beach. And also uh, a portable radio and camera and things like that. Uh, <laughs> What'd you say, Eric? What about the skeleton? Oh, Daniel plans to buy a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, Daniel? Yes, I wanted to buy a, a skeleton of plastic, but I couldn't get one. <laughs> I'm just as glad you didn't. Two years ago, a medical student from Australia bought one, and it was lying full length in my office in its box for three weeks. <laughs> well, what are some of the rest of you taking home? Uh, yes, Willie? Well, as a sportsman, I'm taking, of course, a baseball bat, a glove, and a ball. And so, so I hope to introduce baseball in Belgium. I hope, but I don't know if I will succeed. A uh, Fifi from the Gold Coast? I'm not uh, taking this home because it's rather too expensive, but I'm very, very fond of convertibles, and I'm very, very, very enchanted by the Cadillac convertible. I wish I could take one with me home. Okay. <laughs> Sai from Burma? Uh, when I first came, I had three little ties, these kind of ties, and uh, they were British make, but uh, somehow they weren't so very... Well, uh, I wasn't so fascinated by them. But ever since coming here, I saw some of those flashy American ties and having two or three colors. Well, uh, I've decided to take a few home and show it to my friends, and I'm sure some of them would love it. Uh, yes, Haka? I think I'll take home cooperation between girls and boys. This is one. Ah, UN from Singapore? Well, uh, well. I think my bags are quite loaded already, so I won't be able to shop anymore. But I think one of the things that I'll cherish most are the happy memories that I've got down here. That's and I think it's the best thing I can ever bring back to Singapore and tell my friends all what I've, uh, what I've done in, in America and all the uh, things that I did and all the fine friends I've made all around the world. Oh, uh, well, Marlene, think, did you... I'm sorry, you went. Well, I think some of them will, but uh, the things that we have achieved so far, I think, are really fascinating. It surprises me also. <laughs> and, uh, and I think, uh, well, quite a good number of them will, I think, will believe what I, I tell them when I get back. I Mar Marlene, did you want to answer that? Yes, um, everybody in the forum group knows about my collection of stuffed animals. <laughs> and I've, at the moment, they mount seven, and I'm quite determined to take another few. <laughs> a quick answer, and this has to be the final question from uh, Mrs. Myron Hoost in Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, do you think that your stay in America will do anything to make you a better world citizen? If so, how and what way? Anybody want to take that? Who hasn't talked yet? Well, go ahead, Akram.
I think that it will, uh, it will make me a better world citizen, but it's not going to make me a full world, a pure world citizen. Because uh, uh, after, after I came here, I saw or I listened to too many points of view here in America, uh, from the Americans and from the uh, delegates here, my friends here from all over the world. So I think that uh, this made a better un uh, understanding, to my, uh, uh, for me at least, uh, and I think to most of the delegates here. The Thank you, Afra. I'm sorry we've got to end on that note. This is Helen Hyatt Waller saying good night for the New York Herald Tribune, and we're all sorry to say.